we got to bring it to one of our favorite guys. Um, Cause we were talking about, you know, the backup center probably is still something that the Kings are looking to patch up from the outside. Um, but in the same light is, you know, you don't take one good defensive game and say that all the defensive problems are fixed. I alluded to it earlier. You also don't take one good game from Chemezi Metu as a sign that this guy is your backup center. But all year long, out of all the people that this carousel has stopped for, and it's, you know, you know, who has ever gotten the turn, Chemezi Metu has put in the best performances and put up the most when he had it the first time he probably put up the he easily put up the most consistent stretch of good play it was like felt like you know mid to late november for the most maybe most of november he played really well and uh kind of fell off maybe early mid december and then kind of the carousel started spinning again um but he kind of gets it back on monday and does the things that he does um Tony, I, I know you're a big uh, Chemezi Metu fan. Uh, what any, any thoughts uh, on you know what he provides, what he doesn't provide, and you know how long you think this little uh, kind of boost of Chemezi Metu, Mezi Mamba enthusiasm uh, will last? Well, Chemezi has definitely changed my mind a little more this year, just for that consistent stretch he put up, and like you said most of November until he kind of fell off in December. Um, and I applaud him for it because Holmes wasn't stepping up and someone needed to, and Metu was doing a good job as that backup center. Not a great job, but for what you Metu met can do, it was a good job, right? Um, and he's that guy, he's like, he was doing well because he, he was playing within his limits. He was playing within his role. And I think he lost that job because he started trying to do a little too much. I can, I can, I can hit a hook shot. Like I've earned it. And it's like, no, you play within your role. Um, so I think that's what kind of lost him in that rotation. But like you said, the carousel, the homes, homes got back. He got the job back and then he lost it pretty quick. And Kata had it for maybe, you know, <laughs> two, two games, if that. Um, so now it's back on Metu and he's, uh, well, I, we say it's back on Matthew just because he played against the Magic and he did well. I think he had what, like 11 points, nine rebounds, almost a double double. Mm-hmm. So I don't know. He's just, I don't, at the end of the day, he's not the solution at the back of five. He's just what we have and doing the best at it at the time being, I suppose. Um, but you, I think all Kings fans are hoping that we can pick someone up. I like, honestly, I really like to get Nerlens Noel um, at mm-hmm. the trade deadline or sometime or or sometime, right? Um, yeah, Noel or uh, Plumley, in my opinion. Yeah, exactly. One of those two, or if not, just just someone, someone who can not to Mo Bamba. No, we not. saw Mo Bamba for how many minutes the other night, and he yeah. did not look good. No, he played nine point. minutes, zero for four, zero for three from the field, no rebounds. Um, did have two blocks, I guess, but again, who cares about those? In the words of Mike Brown. Yes, exactly. So, I don't know. Like I said, hats off to Metu. He's he's doing the most with the minutes he's given and in the role he's given. Uh, as long as he doesn't play outside of himself, like we saw him do. Um, uh, but like I said, at the end of the day, it's just if the Kings want to actually be a good team, a winning team. And it's not saying they're not with him at that backup five, but they really want to, they can be a lot better if they get a decent backup five. And they're doing what they can with Metu, but we're, you're going to see him, you know, probably play himself out of the rotation again this season if no one else is picked up. And it's the Holmes, Kata, maybe the Land Metu carousel. They're yeah. all, it's just going to keep going in that circle. And yeah, his, history, his recent history dictates that's exactly how that should go. Mm-hmm. Um, and for whatever the things that Metu does that are good, and there are a fair amount of things that he does well, he, you have an energetic, high-performing bench led by Malik Monk usually. He could fit right into that, running the floor, uh, kind of nesting under the rim, I guess, to get dump-offs and lobs and stuff like that. And um, he's, I think, a, I think, fundamentally speaking he's a better defender than Rashawn Holmes 
Um, he doesn't always have the best moments. Um, he's pretty decent on the glass when he's got it going. It almost seems like as long as he's applying himself to the right direction, he's pretty decent. And then you have to give this also some credence as well. What Mike Brown always says is that Metu's giving the team a completely different look. Metu may be smaller than all these other centers, but he's faster than all of them. He's more athletic than all of them. If he can somehow, again, this might be kind of banking on something that I don't necessarily think is a surefire thing at all. Um, you know, if that can pan out and Metu can be consistent, then that's a great offering. If he can play within himself, affect the game the way he can affect the game and use his very unique uh, physical skill set as a center, that being an undersized athletic one, to his advantage night in and night out, then great. But that's the problem with Metu is can he stay consistent? And that's what you're looking at when we're talking about getting a Nerlens Noel or a, a, a Plumley, because you're, you'd be getting a consistent guy. You know you'd be pretty much barring injury you know, you'd be shoring up that back of five. And that's been the problem this year is, you know, you've had met, like met you played well for a month, but what does that matter if you're not able to like sustain that, you know, that only lifts you for so long that doesn't solve the issue. So, you know, I don't know. I'd love for met too. I, I, I the, by kind of getting another opportunity, I guess at the backup five, it kind of gives you hope again, but you know, he's got to prove that he could be consistent. I don't know if that's 100% what he can do. And I think that when you're thinking about it, I feel like in terms of having that option, maybe in certain matchups to be able to use Metu, not to have to rely on him as the backup five every game. Um, it, there's still value for this guy on this team and for him to get minutes at times. And he's also, to his credit, done a pretty good job of staying ready. I mean, he gets the minutes thrown back in his lap Monday night and he looked great. So he's staying, staying on top of things and he's proven that he can stay um, fresh and prepared for any opportunity that may befall him. So good for him in that regard, but backup center, you got to be looking for a consistent option. 100%. Like you said, Metu probably not anyone's first choice as that backup center. But again, they're like even if they get like a Nerlens Noel or whoever, um, there is still room, like a place for him. And like you said, he has a he has a different uh, physical skill set as a center. He's a little smaller, but like you said, quicker. Um, and you know, Frank Brown has said that he kind of likes the change of looks between him and Sabonis. So he does serve a purpose and can, um, you know, do things for the Kings, <laughs> but. Uh, yeah. Wow, well, you're br- just brimming with enthusiasm about Chemezi Metu as usual, Tony. Yeah, you know I love the dude, right? He's my favorite. Right. I don't know if he did, he, he can I don't know if I can call him Mezzi Mamba anymore though cuz the things that he does he doesn't these aren't Mezzi Mamba moments when he's playing well. He's not hitting game-winning threes. No. <laughs> <laughs> you don't earn my respect till you hit four game winners in a season. <laughs> Score 45 just, points. You just call him MZ uh, Metu, like KZ. Met, like KZ. Yeah, or like C, CZ, CM. I CM like MZ Punk. better, even though his name is. Yeah, Mezzi. Mezzi. Mezzi I like Mezzi. it when they call him. I like it when Katie Christensen calls him Mezzi. She says it with like that little flair to her voice that she does sometimes. Like, All right, Katie. <laughs> oh, my God. Let's not get started on the announcers again.